everyone and welcome to the 1.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, Getting Dressed in Open Simulator World. Our speaker is Beth Ghostraven. Beth has been playing around with her appearance in virtual worlds since 2010. Tired of hunting for non-skanky clothing to wear to meetings and events, she started designing system and prim clothing for educators and other professionals. Her clothing is available free at the Ghost Raven Professional Attire Shop at OSCC in Region 5. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to open to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. Welcome everyone, and let's begin the session. Beth? Hi, I'm Beth Ghost Raven. I am a recently retired middle school librarian, so I have more time to make clothes now. Let's see. I'm not going to read the bio. I'll have already told you about those things anyway. Um, the instructions and screenshots in this presentation are from the Firestorm viewer. Part of the learning curve for teaching and learning in OpenSim is the need to personalize one's avatar, and that really goes for any virtual world. I think that's one of the first things that students try to do when they come into a virtual world is look like an individual at least. Although for teenagers looking like an individual is, um, you know, they want to look like everybody else as an individual. Anyway, um, let's see. I'm hopefully getting the hang of doing this. So teachers need their appearance to enhance and not detract from their instruction. Students need to feel immersed in order to learn effectively and personalizing their avatars contribute to this, in my opinion. This presentation will hopefully help you to explore some possibilities for making your avatar and clothing look like you want them to look. Now, looking around at the audience right now, I can see you're all dressed. So um, I don't know that this is the target audience for this talk. Um, <laughs> yeah. Son, yes. I want to be an individual like all my friends. I love mesh for buildings, furniture, and shoes, and sometimes hair, but not for clothing. Our feet look basically the same, but our avatar shapes do not. I don't have a standard avatar shape, and most mesh clothing does not fit me well. My body image struggles in real life have left me with a philosophy that all of our shapes have value, whether they are standard or not. And I include animal avatars and robot avatars and whatever kind of avatar people want to use for this. Clothing for hippos, yes. Especially if you don't have a classic, a standard shape, classic clothing may work better for you as it does for me. Some people consider um, classic system clothing and prim clothing to be old fashioned. Um, I think I'm seeing a little bit of a resurgence of it among some people who are really tired of trying to deal with mesh. Although OpenSim does not really have anything in the library part of the inventory, these classic avatars from the Federal Consortium of Virtual Worlds and more are available in the shopping zone of the OSCC grid. And Mike, yes, with Baked On Mesh, you can apply system clothing to mesh bodies now, which is awesome. These are decent looking starting points and you can mix and match pieces of all of these. 
There are also freebies all over the open sim grid, but finding them can be a little tricky and time consuming. I will have or I have free clothing in my shop on Expo Zone 5 and it's available all year. Um, the shop is a brick building to the east of the landing point. Now the clothing in open sim is free. My clothing in Second Life is mostly not free, but I think my prices are fairly reasonable. Um, but a, a lot of the same things are available in Second Life and Open Sim. And Sun says part of the problem in Second Life is based on mostly on looking sexy. So much of the avatars do not fit the diversity of ways people want to look. True. Here's how to wear clothes. You can open your inventory and drag a folder with clothing onto your avatar. Um, I recommend always adding things, never click wear. Um, early on, I made the mistake in a hair store of um, wearing a hair um, demo. And that's all I was wearing when I looked at my avatar. That was so embarrassing. Now, I know for some people, it really doesn't matter what you're wearing, but I tend to be really immersive in virtual worlds. So to me, it matters. Um, so I make sure I'm always wearing some system layers, even if I am wearing mesh clothes. Um, in inventory or in appearance, you can click the worn or wearing tab to see what you have on. Yes, Lear, add is my friend. You can always take something off, but if you've taken it off accidentally, it's not always easy to find what you have. Add items, never wear. So you don't wind up only wearing your hair, for instance. An easy way to change clothes is to save combinations of items as outfits in your inventory. That's one of, my, one of my favorite things to do in virtual worlds is making outfits. Yeah, don't put on your full inventory. Whoops, I keep clicking the slides instead of the speakeasy. Once you're dressed the way you want to be, open the appearance um, thing that it looks like a t-shirt icon and click save as to name your outfit. If there's a default outfit you want to have easy access to, put an exclamation point at the beginning of the file name to make it sort to the top of your list when you um, sort things alphabetically. To quickly change your outfit, right click on it, either in inventory or appearance, and click replace current outfit. To make sure your clothes and hair travel with you, for pick at least one outfit and move everything from that outfit into the My Suitcase folder in your inventory. Name the outfit so you know which one you can safely wear for hypergridding to other grids. You can hypergrid with your clothes not in My Suitcase, but this is a little extra added bit of insurance. Permissions are one of the trickiest parts of virtual world clothing. Something might say no modify when it's actually only the script inside that can't be changed. If the item doesn't have any permissions after it in your inventory, then it's full perm. The undershirt layers in this folder are necklaces that are made as a system layer rather than the usual perms. Leah, that's a good idea. She says, I pack my suitcase, as Mal Burns puts it, and name my folders. Lear wear, name of outfit. So I can search for all of my Lear wares to find an outfit.
In this presentation, classic avatars and clothing are defined as any non-mesh avatars and clothing. Shapes and skins work together to make the basic avatar body. This shows the difference between shape and skin and how they work together to create an avatar. Um, these are from the Linden Lab Library, but shapes and skins in OpenSim work the same way. Really, the best thing is to just play around with it and see um, what you wind up liking. When you're modifying something, make a copy first. It's really easy to totally mess something up when you're trying to customize it. Um, you can always check with the designer to see whether they'll give you another copy, but make a copy first. You can easily change your shape. As with other items, make a copy before you start changing things around. This is the body tab with sliders. You can use the sliders to um, change your avatar. Just again, just play around with it. And this is part of the face um, sliders, the eyes. There are things broken down into different body parts that you can um, can change. So when you're looking at system clothing and hair, the icons on the right, except for the alpha layer, show system items in your inventory. If you show only clothing, um, these will be the only things that show up. And yes, if it's a cube, then it's an attachment, a prim object. And these all can be customized using sliders, depending on how the item is made. Make a copy first before you edit anything. When you're editing system clothing, um, in this jacket, the upper fabric is a template created in Photoshop, which cannot be altered in a virtual world. Because it is grayscale, though, it can be recolored by clicking the color slash tint box. Or even if it is, if it does have a color in it, you can um, add colors to it. Make sure you click OK on the color before you close it. You can also um, edit the sleeve lengths and um, other things with this, depending on how, again, on how it's made. The cube um, ob icons are objects that show the prim clothing here. Except for the AO, um, the animation overrider, you can wear or res the object and edit it. Make a copy first and use a pose stand or um, a pose so your avatar stays in one place. And this shows editing prim objects. Um, I generally have to uh, edit necklaces so I can wear them because I'm short. My avatar is shorter than most avatars. Um, so my necklace tends to be inside my head until I move it. Even if the object can't be moved, can't be modified, if it's non-mesh, it can at least be moved. Also, even if it's mesh, if it is unrigged, then it can be moved. Some items have resized scripts in them. If that's the case, don't edit, but click on the object to open the resize menu. Um, and again, make a copy before you make changes if possible. Questions? Sun says you have a setting in preferences if you need to get closer to your jewelry. Um, so you can 
cam in closer on something. And Lear says original and Learware copies in folders. Keeps me straight so I do not mess up my originals. Disable camera constraints. That's the thing um, that Sun is talking about. So you can get closer to your avatar. Or cam in closer rather. Looking around, it looks like most everybody here is an experienced user of virtual worlds. Um, so I don't know that you all would have questions, but please, um, if you know someone who's having trouble getting dressed or modifying their avatar, um, let them know that I'll help them out if they like. Lear says, and for new folks, use your escape key to return to yourself. Somewhat disheveled, but relieved. Sidearm says, sign space desperately needs you. The thing about sign space is that the clothing is designed differently than Second Life and Open Sim. It's designed in um, either a clothing app or in, oh, I forget what it's called, having a brain fart. Um, so I don't know how to do that yet. So we have a few minutes left or a couple minutes, but there's nothing wrong with closing up early. Hey, anybody? Uh, uh, before you close, there was a question that came in. This is Lear. Uh, the question was, <laughs> if you're wearing mesh, and you'd said earlier about wearing system clothing underneath it, so you always have something on, but when your avatar first appears places, for educators particularly, sometimes the mesh clothing doesn't appear at the same time. And how do you prevent looking stark naked, you know, for that, class, you know, <laughs> or conference presentation. The um, best thing I know okay. of is to make sure you have um, at least a shirt and pants on of some kind in, of system layers. Um, sure. Also, if you're changing your outfit in front of an audience, make sure you change um, those two layers first before you change your whole outfit. That way, you, hopefully, you have something over them. <laughs> Low resolution underwear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chamisa adds that baked on mesh is the trick. Because see, what happens is the mesh comes in naked, but you're wearing clothes underneath it. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, refreshing. Right. Well, thank you all for listening patiently. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth for informative and interesting presentation. And I love the ad. Yes, it's my 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 dear friend. <laughs> As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which will begin at 2 p.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Learning to Live on Mars. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and also explore the hypergrade resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowd funder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speaker and the audience. <laughs>